So I'm trying to understand uh, sometimes when I'm looking at myself why I'm the way I am, my character, manners, whatever. There are certain things that are clear. Oh, you used to do this and that. Oh, you experienced this and that. But then when I go back to my childhood, I say that was out of my control. That I was, I was, we were protected, we were clean. But there were certain things in your life that it influenced the way you became or you would become. So then how, how do we deal with those things that if we say I'm like this because from baby I was like this. Yeah. But we say that doesn't fit to what we're supposed to be. Our right. Originality. Right. How do we address that like ourselves? That you are still changing. The question is, put it simply, How do we change those things that, since we're a baby, they have been taught to us, right, basically? Because when you grow up, you think, well, I go through these certain experiences and this is why it shapes me to be how I am, how I think, how I talk, how I understand things. Those things uh, you know you did when you are more or less able to think, able to reason. But there are also things being done to you before you reach that age of thinking for yourself. And those things also, it changes you. So how do you become better? If those things that change you when you are still a kid and you cannot do anything, and if it's affecting you in a bad way, how do you change that? And is it possible to change? The only one who says that it is impossible to change is shaitan and your ego. Ego doesn't want to change. If it changes, it's only for one split second and it goes back again by force. Shaitan is not forced yet. Shaitan doesn't want to change. He's not forced yet. He's not under heavy punishment. But he's sulking. Okay? But what do we do when we know that certain things have been done to us when we are a child and it shape us to become what we are later to how to think and later it shapes us how to behave in this world. That's why the job of this changing, if the person wants to become better, to become close to Allah, we're not talking about how to become a useful member of society or how to become normal or how to get rid of all these mental issues. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how, if you want to become a better person for the sake of Allah. Now for this job, how you do it, you cannot do it by yourself. How can you do this? To change, to improve, to become better, to understand, to realize. You cannot even do it, just your family helping you out. You cannot do it, community also doing that. You cannot reach there. You cannot even do it just by studying the religion. Hmm? And going up and down and praying and making a zikr. You cannot. You have to be in the hands of a shaykh and to be in his sohbet. That you have to. And when you do that, you will start not only understanding all maybe the bad things that you have done or that's been done to you, you'll start to understand the goodness that you have inside of you also. Because that is what the shakes they are trying to do you know we talk so much about yes pulling out the ego and cleaning yourself out no but if you pull out the ego what is left there it is a spirit but it is also to take out the good things that is in you because if you take out the bad things what is left the good things if you take out arrogance what is left there 
It's just humbleness to your Lord, humbleness to everything, humbleness and love to everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. When you take out that arrogance, then it doesn't make a difference to you whether it's an ant or a human, whether it's a house or a village, whether it's you or someone else, whether it's your family or someone else's family. So you need a shaykh then that time. It is not a chemical imbalance. It is not years and years and years of just therapy and understanding yourself only. You need that heavenly help because you're trying to reach to your heavenly self that has been covered up all these years. So even when you're a child but things are done to you now, there is a way for a person now to come back to that innocence, to understand what that is. And there is a way for a person now, when he sees innocence around him, he is not going to, how you say, uh, repeat what has been done to him. He will learn how to break the cycle. And he will become the opposite. If he has been treated very badly, he will not continue that. He will say this is wrong now. And when he looks at children, he knows, even if they don't say anything, this one has been treated badly, this is like this, this is like this. So once he turns around and he does that, whose job is that? That is the job of prophets, you understand? Now that job is now given to those ones who are with prophets and they have woken up to themselves. And now they say, it's not that they do it saying, oh, I want to do the job of the Prophet, but they're doing it because they can't help it. Why you can't help it? Because it's your nature now to help. Whatever good that you have experienced, you want people to feel that. Whatever bad they experience, you want to prevent that from happening to others around you. And slowly you're going to open up. It's not just your family. Other families too. Other people around you. We start with that. We start with the Jamaat. You got to start somewhere. People are usually starting with just their family and they're stuck. No. You got to start with a community that is cross cultural, cross ethnic, very different from you, all running in the same way. And then you'll be able to balance it and you'll be able to help. And then that way you are also doing the work of the prophets. You understand? And then, when it's necessary, they say you come healing, you heal yourself only much later. It's so many people, they get healed, and then what do they do? They enter into a life of nonsense again. You want to get balance, for what? If you getting balance means that you just want to do as you like again, as your ego likes again. But if you are unbalanced and you are running to help others and to fix things, where is the wisdom now? Which one? We are fasting not to make ourselves hungry so that we can eat more. If we are fasting to feast, then it defeats the purpose, right? Fasting month is not for togetherness, family, like Thanksgiving, no. Fasting is to make you understand that you are a weak creature. You are so weak, you need your Lord. And you need your Lord's provisions first. So don't be so proud because you understand, no matter how proud and strong a person is, he doesn't get one glass of water, you'll become a crybaby, you become cranky, you become this, you become that. First to understand and then to realize by himself, Allah, Allah, then I shouldn't be fake because this is part of me, this is real too. Then you start treating people nicely. At the very least, you are controlling your anger. When you can control outside of that, fasting month, you'll be able to control what people are controlling yourself, how people are treating you.
So what's the use of fasting? If all about fasting is so that you can eat more, then it defeats the purpose. What is the use of gaining some sort of a balance? If gaining the balance, you're just going to continue with a selfish lifestyle. What is the purpose and what is the sense of everything going back to normal? If going back to normal means we can go back to turning our backs against our Lord, that we learn nothing. We haven't been in to California in how long? Almost, years. Almost a couple of years, right? What's happening to it? We are weak servants of Allah. And when you are understanding that, you become very strong because you are fighting against your ego. And when you fight against your ego, you become strong. Then you become part of that circle of haq. Then you are able to, even small matters, to do what the prophets are doing. Small matters even to do what the Sahabis are doing. But we have to get strong, we have to get excited about it, we have to take it seriously, we have to be sincere about it. Don't do that Sufi, goofy thing also saying, oh, who am I, what it is, da 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 No, you can, you will do it. The person who does everything, then he has the right to say, who am I, I didn't do anything, yes. The only time when you say you didn't do anything is when you do everything. Don't be an idiot and you do nothing and say, oh, I did nothing. You only take from people and say, oh, I'm the worst. Then you are a hypocrite. Because the one who says, I'm nothing, I'm the lowest, he will behave that way and he will run to serve others because he is seeing himself as a servant to others. Which includes, not only to give someone a glass of water or to run, which includes someone saying, hey, you idiot, someone hurting his feelings. You understand? Then you can become strong because you know this is not, there's nothing true in that. Allah make us strong, inshallah. Wow. So, caravan continues. It continues, inshallah. Don't fall off. Wa bin Allahu Tawfiq al Fatiha. Salaam alaikum. Okay. Ashka, what else do we have? So your answer, how to come back? You can. But it's not just to come back, it's to move forward. Hmm? Is it to come back and to become innocent like that? Long? No, it's not also. It's to understand that. And then, to be patient also. It's beyond your control, Allah made it to happen. There must be some hikmat to that. Then you say, ah, then maybe because I've gone through that, I know what it feels, then I can really help others. And that ability to help others is not given to everyone, you know. Then you say, I've gone through that and I have the ability now, together with my guide, together with the Jamaat, under the guidance, then I can break that cycle. I'm not just going to continue. Because someone did this to me, I'm going to do it to someone. This is the world, no? I'm going to break it. Not because I think so or people think so, because it's a theory, it's a philosophy, no, because Allah is saying. At that time you become very strong. Even when you're weak, you become strong. 